Good morning, 3D printing friends. This is HL Mod Tech, and today I am here to teach you how I use Autodesk Mesh Mixer to make supports for the designs that I print. So you can see here I'm on Thingiverse, and this is a cool Fortnite character, and I'll switch into Thing View so that we can see it in 3D. And you'll see that if we rotate around, she has got a hand and an elbow, and uh, those are sitting out in thin air. So if you just started to print, your printer would build from the bottom up great until this location, and then it would start dropping plastic out in thin air unless you had supports. And your printer has built-in supports, but I have found I like mesh mixer supports much better. So let me show you the settings I use to make that happen. First, let's grab the thing file, and I always go to the thing file location, and we've got Sarah one hex here. And I'm just going to download it into my 3D modeling folder and I'm going to keep the name. All right, so let's launch the free Autodesk Mesh Mixer and then choose the import option. My rig is wired so that it knows to look in my 3D modeling folder so then I can grab that new hex and hit open and she appears on our screen. Now Mesh Mixer is built for you to add and adjust meshes but that's not what I want to do uh, you can see that you can right click and orient it you can click up on the view bar and check out the parts that you want to adjust and check out scroll in and scroll out to view but once again all we want to do is make sure the models correct and then we also want to make sure it's aligned and then we want to add supports I'm gonna start with edit align and I'm just gonna accept it getting put on what they call their work plane I'll click on my right view and zoom back out so I've got a good look at it again, even though it really doesn't matter. I'm going to switch to analysis and I'm going to run the inspector and tell it to auto repair all. So it's looking for poor meshes. It did not find any, so I'm all good. Um, let's get this back to the front again. All right. And then I'm going to tell it done. And then we go to the overhangs button. This is the magic place where you get to make supports. I'm going to start with the replicator 3mm defaults and then when you just hit generate support watch what it does. You'll have to wait a moment as it uh, works through the math. Everybody's computers are different you know. And after a few moments I did pause the movie and just let it do its thing. You can see I've got this crazy snake like creature that will build all the way up our Fortnite character and make it so that she prints at a decent quality and does not have the wasted support that a normal printer's support mechanism would give. And these are also super easy to snap off. I am not happy with these settings though. Uh, I have done a lot of this and I have found that it's cooler if you go into the support area and I'm going to set the density to something like 15. And these numbers are all things that you can adjust. I always set mine to 0.3 millimeters and then I like my post to be four or five millimeters in size. I'm going to go with four millimeter post today. I always put the uh, tip at 0.4 because I'm printing with a four millimeter nozzle. And then I set these at eight sometimes. Sometimes I set them to six. And now watch this as we do this uh, generate support again. A, it goes a lot faster because the posts are thicker and they're less dense. B, you'll notice we get much fewer of these supports as she builds. Now I'm going to remove the support one more time. Another thing when I print these, I print these for students a lot in my school uh, when they earn a free 3D print. Um, I also go into the transform button and I make sure that they're a size I'm willing to print. As I watched how much support she had, I figured out that this person's way bigger than I print. I never print things for kids at 16 centimeters high. My max is about eight centimeters high. So I'm gonna just type 80 for the scale of Y. Uh, this is a weird thing in Mesh Mixer. A uh, Y is up. Oops, uh, I wanna do uniform scaling, so I'm gonna do uh, Control Z to undo that. I'm going to put on the uniform and let's wash her again so that she doesn't shrink down like that. So now she's at the size that I expect. I'm going to once again zoom in and look at from the front. 
I'm going to accept those changes. And let's go back to the analysis and the supports for the overhangs. It's still got my custom settings, 45, 15. I'm going to save those. I'm going to hit the down uh, arrow, hit save current, and I'm going to call these uh, four millimeter. And I'm going to put an A after it because you may have noticed I already had one. And MMA is kind of funny. Notice the red shows things that were totally unsupported. And let's see how she looks now with the four millimeter supports. Yes. This is what I was looking for because these uh, look the thickness that I want. And then I would do file, export. And then I'm just going to go down and get the same name. But in front of it, I'm going to type supported. And once I save that, I head to Kira and delete the part I printed a few minutes ago. At that point, we can bring in our Fortnite character or whatever you have designed, and she is ready to print. I am not using high quality settings. You can see I've got it set at 0.3, but I'm not printing this for me. It's just to show you. So I'm going to go with that, save the file, and head over to my printer to get it started. Friends, I hope this helped you learn how to use Mesh Mixer a little bit. Please, if you like the movie, hit that like button. If you have any comments, add them in the comments area below. If you would, please click that subscribe button. And if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new movie from HL Mod Tech, click that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, friends. Looking forward to seeing you again next time.